action is a way of writing the part or parts of a thing or set. All fractions have a numerator and a denominator. The denominator is the number written under the bar or after the slanted line. The denominator tells you how many equal parts the thing or set is divided into. The numerator is the number written on top of the bar or before the slanted line. The numerator tells you the number of parts you are observing. I have a silly way of remembering which is the denominator in a fraction. Oh, hi, Dennis. How do you remember which one is the denominator? <laughs> I think of it as the down-ominator. Okay, that's a good way to remember it. Now let's look at some examples of how we might use fractions. Suppose you had a package of candy bars that had five candy bars in it. Then the number in the set, or the denominator, would be five. And the numerator would depend on how many of the candy bars you are talking about. So, if my sister came and took four out of the package, then we could say that she took four-fifths of the candy bars. That's right. And how much of the package do you have left? Well, there's one left in here. So I have one-fifth of the candy bars left. Hey, where did you get that whole candy bar? Can I have half? Wait a minute, Newman. Why half? There are three of us now, so we should divide it into thirds. Okay, here. You can have this little piece. Well, that's not fair. To get a third, all three parts have to be the same size for it to be divided into thirds. Good point, Newman. Let's get a ruler and a knife. That's two inches for Dennis, two inches for Newman, and two inches for me. Now I get it. You have to divide a candy bar or anything else into parts that are the same size and shape to use a fraction. That's right. We call parts that are the same size and shape congruent parts. If the parts of an object are the same size and shape, they are congruent. Let's say that again in a shorter form to make it a little more fluent. Same size and shape. Congruent. Same size and shape. Congruent. Same size and shape. Congruent. Play a game with fractions. First, look at the object. Count the total number of parts. That'll be the denominator. Then, count the parts that are a color other than black, white, or gray. And that'll be the numerator. Try to say the fraction out loud before we do. Ready? Five-sixths of the rectangle is in color. That's right. Let's look at another one. Four-sevenths of the rectangle is in color. of the square is in color. Seven-eighths of the square is in color. is in color. Ten-sixths 
two-thirds of the semicircle is in color. Three-fifths of the star is in color. Six-ninths of the cupcakes are in color and even look good enough to eat. <laughs> I'd like a chocolate one. Nine-twelfths of these eggs have been cut. We'll finish dyeing the rest of them later. But look, for now, three-twelfths are not dyed. of these TVs have us in color. It's been a while since I've seen a black and white TV. Now let's move on to the bonus round. These are tricky. Hey, this hexagon isn't divided into congruent parts. We can't fool you, Dennis. But if we rearrange the lines like this and color in five, like this, then five-sixths of the hexagon is in color. Always remember that an object has to be divided into congruent parts in order to use fractions to talk about it. I remember. Congruent means the parts have to be the same size and shape. This is kind of tricky. All of these gummy bears are in color. So, I'm going to say 12 twelfths are in color. Good job, Dennis. Or you can say one whole set is in color. If the numerator and the denominator are the same number, that's the same thing as describing one whole object or set. So, 12 twelfths equal one. if we divided the gummy bears by different colors. Do you mean divide them by red, yellow, and green? Yes. It looks like one-third of them are red, one-third of them are yellow, and one-third of them are green. Wait a minute. Where did you get that they are in thirds? Remember that a fraction is a way of writing the part or parts of a thing or set you are observing? Well, we decided to look at the different colors of the bears. Each group of the different colors are the same size, and all the bears are the same shape. So we can divide the set into three parts, representing the three colors. The fraction that describes the red gummy bears is one-third. But, but, if you look at the bears separately, then the fraction is four-twelfths. You're both right! One-third and four-twelfths are what we call equivalent fractions. That means we have different names for the same amount. Is that kind of like how a person can have more than one name? That's another way to look at it. Newman and I call you Dennis, but your sister calls you Denny. Yeah, that's my nickname. Equivalent fractions are like a nickname. Whenever you see them, you know they're the same. They're the same amount. If you have any doubt, just take a look at them. Check it out. Let's look at some more equivalent fractions. If we have a piece of paper, fold it in half, and open it up, how many parts do you see? I see two congruent parts. So, if I color in one of the parts red, then one half of the paper is red. Now watch this. Oh, I see. Now it shows that two quarters of the paper is colored in red. 
So one half and two fourths are equivalent fractions too. Now you've got the idea. Here, let me try. One half, two quarters, and four eighths are all equivalent. Super! Let's practice identifying equivalent fractions. We'll sing while we look at the pictures, and then decide if they are equivalent or non-equivalent. Try to say equivalent or non-equivalent before we do. Equivalent fractions are like a nickname. Whenever you see them, you know they're the same. They're the same amount. If you have any doubt, just take a look and we'll check it. We have four sixths of this cake left, and there's eight twelfths of this cake left. So are they equivalent? Yes. Equivalent fractions are like a nickname. Whenever you see them, you know they're the same. I see two halves in this sandwich, or should I say, a whole sandwich. There's a hole in your sandwich? Not yet. I'm waiting for you to check yours before I eat any. Well, I just ate one quarter, so there's only three quarters of the sandwich left. So are they equivalent? No, they are non-equivalent at this point. Equivalent fractions are like a nickname. Stop! Not yet. No! from the one with five eighths, then it would be four eighths. And four eighths and eight sixteenths are equivalent. Great! I think we have the idea. Let's move on to the bonus question. If ten kids were together in a group, five of them boys and five of them girls, what two equivalent fractions could we use to describe the number of girls? Well, the easiest fraction would be five-tenths. Five-tenths of the kids are girls. And the other fraction would be one-half. Half of the kids are girls. Yes, but explain how you got that answer. Well, I saw that I could divide the one large group of kids into two groups, the boys and the girls. And since there were an equal number in each group, then I figured that I could use one half to describe the girls. Impressive. But if there had been six girls and four boys, we couldn't have done that, right? That's right. The smaller groups have to have the same number in each group. <laughs> divided into four pieces each. Now that's what I call pie in the sky. Oh, great. Now we only have five pieces. Wait a minute. That's five quarters. How can this be? It's okay. We can have more than four quarters because we started with two whole pies. Five quarters is what we call an improper fraction. So all of the other fractions were proper fractions? That's right, Newman. If the smaller number is up on top, that's a proper fraction. The numerator is smaller than the denominator. But if the bigger number is up on top, that's an improper fraction. The examples to make sure I've got this straight. Sure thing. See how fast you can say the fraction of the pieces in orange. Then say whether the fraction is proper or improper. Three halves. Improper. Seven eighths. Wow, you almost fooled me.
me with that one. Well then, take a look at these. Eleven fifths. Improper. Three fourths. Proper. Hello. Notice something. Three thirds of a circle is the same as one whole circle. And we have one third of another circle. Boy, you catch on fast, Newman. Another way to write four thirds is one and one third. This is called a mixed numeral because we have a whole number and a fraction mixed together. Mixed numerals, huh? Maybe you should show us some more of these mixed numerals so I don't get mixed up. Okay, let's look at the improper fractions from the last examples and turn them into mixed numerals. With these two triangles, one is colored in orange and a half of another one is colored in orange. So three halves is the same as one and one half. Fantastic! Let me do this one. Two whole rectangles and one-fifth of another. So two and one-fifth are orange, right? Way to go! All this talk of orange reminds me. My dad bought some boxes of oranges that he wants to divide equally between the people in our families. Including me, we have four people in my family. Five people are in my family. Okay. If we add the 9 from your families to the 6 from my family, we have a total of 15 people to divide the 33 oranges by. Here, let me do that on my calculator. We each get 22. That can't be right. Here, let me see that. That says 2.2. 2. 2.2, huh? That's a special kind of fraction called a decimal. 2.2 is more than 2, but less than 3. It can also be read as 2 and 2 tenths. A decimal is a fraction. And to find out what you've got, count the number of places to the right of the little dot. You can keep on going as long as you need to. Or zero point five. 
Okay, I get that. But what if we have two numbers past the decimal? Remember our song? A decimal is a fraction. And to find out what you've got, count the number of places to the right of the little dot. One tenths, two hundredths, three thousandths. One tenths, two hundredths, three thousandths. So, two numbers would mean we have hundredths. We're going to need a lot more pieces. Let's just divide each of the rectangles into 10 equal pieces. Now our square is divided into 100 smaller squares. If three full columns and five squares of another column are colored red, that's 35 out of 100 squares that are red. We can write that as 35 100 or 0.35. Let me try one. Let's see. One full column makes 10 squares, and three more makes 13. That's 13 one hundredths, or 0 0.13. I'll do this one. There are seven full columns, and one more square colored red. So the fraction is 71 one hundredths, or 0 0.71. My turn! This fraction is 20 one hundredths. So in decimal form, it's 0 0.20. Very good! Now look at this one. Only two squares are colored in. So that would be two one hundredths. Correct! And to write the decimal, you have to be sure to put the two in the right place. So this one would be... 0 0.02 Outstanding! I believe you have it down. What if I have a fraction like two-fifths and I want to write it down as a decimal? How would I do that? You can't do that. The denominator is in 10 or 100 or 1,000 or hold on. It's time I let you guys in on a little secret. I knew it! You've been hiding something from us. Oh, man! Calm down, guys. This is really simple. A fraction with a numerator and a denominator is just like a division problem. Divide the numerator by the denominator. That's the way to get the decimal number. Divide the numerator by the denominator. Oh, come on now. I told you how. Divide the numerator by the denominator. I use my calculator? Sure, Dennis. Two-fifths is the same as saying two divided by five. What did you get? Oh, 0 0.4. That's four-tenths. So does that mean that two-fifths and four-tenths are equivalent fractions? Newman, my man, you catch on fast. Cool. Try one-fourth. That's one of my favorites. 0 0.25. That means that 25 hundredths and one quarter are equivalent fractions too, right? Yep. Hey, this is pretty neat. Let me try one. Let's see. One eighth would be one divided by eight, which comes out to 0 0.125. So 125 one thousandths is equivalent to one eighth. So, will this work with any fraction that has a numerator and a denominator? Yes, it will. You may get a very long answer, though. It may even be too long for a calculator to show you all of the decimal places. Sometimes the decimal even goes on forever. What are you talking about, Francis? Yeah, how's that possible? Let's try one third. That's simple enough, right? Right. I'll just punch it in and... Whoa! 
Wow, the three fill up the whole display. And if you do this by hand with long division, you'll see that they keep going forever. What should we do then? Don't worry about it too much. The further to the right of the decimal point you are, the smaller the number is. We can pick a spot to stop and look one decimal place to the right. If that next number is five or larger, we'll round up to get an approximate answer. And if the next number is four or less, then we just chop off the extra digits. That's a good way to get close to the number. I'll just be sure I go out enough decimal places to get the precision I want. Good plan, Newman. Sometimes that's what you have to do. And sometimes it's best to leave the fraction written with a numerator and a denominator. We're almost finished, but you will learn many more things about fractions and decimals later. For example, you will learn to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. Hey, I heard that it's easy to add and subtract fractions if they have the same denominator. You heard right, Newman. Let me show you why. Look at this sandwich divided into fourths. How many fourths are here? It's all there. There are four fourths. Now, if we take away one fourth and give it to Dennis, how many fourths are left? Three fourths are left. So, if we write it out, we have four fourths minus one fourth equals three fourths. I've got it now. If you want to subtract two fractions, things can get rough. But we learned something easy just now that makes it not so tough. Look at the denominators. Make sure they are the same. Then subtract the numerators. That's how we play this game. Put the difference of the numerators above the denominator. Put the difference of the numerators above the denominator. Let's do it. Hello? If we start with four-fifths of this star and take one-fifth of the star away, we get three-fifths. One-fifth minus one-fifth equals three-fifths. We have eight-ninths of this rectangle minus four-ninths of the rectangle means that we have four-ninths of the rectangle left. Eight-ninths minus four-ninths equals four-ninths. Okay. There's five-sevenths of this circle. Take away two-sevenths of the circle. And we have three-sevenths of the circle left. Five-sevenths minus two-sevenths equals three-sevenths. Is is watching hey, wait a uh, minute. A video Where's on, on this? Factor. Looks like he got taken away. Say, that means that one third of us got taken away. And there's two thirds of us what left. Did you say? Three thirds minus one third equals oh, okay. two thirds. Wow, subtracting Ooh. fractions seems easy if the denominators are the same. It was, it was the How about adding it. fractions? That's just as simple. So, if you want to add two fractions, it can be fun for you. Idea. Yeah. Make sure the denominators are the same and here is what you do. Down. Put the sum down. of so the numerators above the denominator. Oh. Put the sum of the numerators above the denominator. Let's yeah. do it. If we start with three eighths of this square and add two eighths, we get five eighths. Three eighths plus two eighths equals five eighths. We have one sixth of this triangle. Stop! 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 I 
Plus four twelve for the rectangle. No! Plus four twelve for the rectangle. 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 Plus four twelve for the